Hello and welcome to The Lucky Roll, an eclectic channel for eclectic games. And today we're doing part three of the Atomic Bonds playthrough. Now we're doing the very first Fallout game, which is Rise of the Master, and we're working on behalf of the Brotherhood. We have two players, we have Dennis and we have Cassidy. Unfortunately, the game is going very badly. Um, both Cassidy and Dennis are both underarmed and poorly armored. They're simply not equipped to deal with the multitude of enemies that we have here. In order to progress the story, we need to go to the cathedral and quest there. However, we need to defeat every single one of the shield tiles on the board in order to do so. And the last couple of times that we tried to do that, we had our collective arses kicked. So, the game, unfortunately, is also nearly over, as the timer here, if it goes down one more spot, I lose the game, and that timer will go down once the shield icon appears in these activation cards. So, it's not really a case of winning the game anymore, it's more a case of trying to do some good for the Wasteland before the Unity takes over. Now, I had to think about what bit of good I could do before I lose the game, and there's two choices. Of the missions that are available, there is Drain the Swamp and the Boxcar Children. Now, Drain the Swamp is about finding a home for ghouls. Now, there's two places I can find a home for them. I could find it here at the Super Mutant Camp, or I could find it here at the Robco Factory. Now, the only condition is I have to make sure that there's no enemies around two spaces around the actual space itself. Now, that's not likely with the Super Mutant Camp because the Unity is crawling all over the place. Here, however, at the Robco Factory, if I take on this looter and kill it and get back in time to the Robco Factory, I might be able to find a home for the ghouls before I lose the game. The other aspect is the Boxcar Children. Now, what I normally need to do is I need to donate three items. However, I have only one item that I could possibly give them from Cass, and they are here. So, whilst Dennis is trying to do a bit of good for the Robco factory, Cass is going to try and get the boxcar children so she can donate to them her sniper rifle. Now, the other quests that are in play are the Rogue Vertibird, which is here. I can basically pay four caps and arrive anywhere on the map with this Vertibird. Unfortunately, where I need to go is actually there, so there's no point in paying four caps for that little trip. The other aspect is the desert vault which is vault 44 now unfortunately i haven't uncovered vault 44 yet so we never got a chance to explore it and finally there is the wacky wasteland which is an amusing little card because it gives you a choice of going this way that way or enjoying the journey now if you have the luck trait you can enjoy the journey and draw three cards if it's the other two you only draw one of the cards now we both have the luck trait, so if we have time to get the Wacky Wasteland in, along with the Boxcar Children and the Super Mutants, we'll try it. But, unfortunately, it's all against us. So, we'll start with Dennis. Now, Dennis is going to go one, two... Actually, he's going to go three spaces, because there is a gap here. Now, Dennis has, in case you forgot from last time, the Speed Demon mutation so he can actually move an extra space but it will hurt him so he's going to go one two three and he gets two bouts of radiation however i did buy right away last time so just for the sake of it and getting some use out of it i'm going to discard this card and remove four radiation so my radiation goes from seven to three and for dennis's next go he's going to try and kill that looter now the looter is only a level one, so Dennis the looter is only a level one, so Dennis should be able to kind of tackle him. And we need basically hits on the legs. So rolling the dice, we have zero hits on the legs. So this is what's been plaguing me the entire time is just very poor dice rolls. And the looter, of course, gets to hit Dennis back. So he does two points of damage. However, Dennis has the vault suit, so it negates one of those points of damage. So it's basically one point of damage goes through and hits Dennis. And that is Dennis's turn over, and the looter doesn't go anywhere. 
Cass now needs to make it to the boxcar children, so she's going to go one. And actually, what I think I'll do is I didn't have a, a well. Oh no, Cass has a well-rested trait, so Cass will go one, and she'll explore this tile. And this brings us Vault 109, and of course the Deathclaw monster, which. Things couldn't have possibly gotten worse, but they will. And what we do is we reveal this tile, and it is a glowing one. So we get to choose, oh no, we don't get to choose where it goes. We simply just, it appears face up there. So Cass's journey to the boxcar children has just become that little bit more dangerous. And it is now the game's turn. So turning over the first card, and let's hope there's no shield icon, we have super mutants and bugs. So the bugs take a step forward. So this bug moves towards um, Dennis. This bug, fortunately, moves towards Dennis, but it is still two spaces away from the Rabco factory. Um, this bug moves towards Dennis. This bug moves towards Cassidy. And that's all the bugs on the game. Now we also need to move the super mutants. So this super mutant, we can unfortunately is going to move here into this space with Dennis so Dennis needs to kill two icons to fix it and this super mutant is also going to move onto the same space as Dennis uh, actually he's not he's going to shoot at Dennis because he has the pistol icon so Dennis is currently in combat with that super mutant and the super mutant behemoth as you can see here has a speed icon so he actually moves two spaces. Uh, he was here next to the Brad Scorpion, I believe, so he's... Yep, one, two. So the Super Mutant Behemoth is here. So Dennis has gone from attacking basically one looter to having four bad guys to deal with. So um, the bad guys he is dealing with are a Super Mutant Skirmisher, which is the first one that attacks him, uh, a Super Mutant Brute, which also attacks him, uh, a looter which he can opt to attack and a super mutant behemoth which he can opt to attack so uh, neither of these characters have the lightning symbol so Dennis can at least try and take the other two out first so let's resolve the combat between these two so we'll try for the super mutant skirmisher first so I need head and arms and we need three hits so we have one head and two misses. Now, unfortunately, we have no rerolls. So, what happens is the Super Mutant Skirmisher does three points of damage. No, he actually he doesn't. The single point of damage is blocked by Dennis's armor, and it's negated. So, it was kind of a nil-all draw in that particular fight. The next one is a Super Mutant Brute. Now, he needs three chest attacks to be killed. So, rolling the dice, we need three chest pieces. And we have one hit on a chest and three points of damage. Now, we negate one point of damage for the Vault Suit, so that's two, multiplied by the creature level, which is three. So, that is six points of damage. So, 13 now becomes seven. And Dennis is hurt. And yeah, so our plan to help the super mutants has failed miserably because there's no way Dennis can kill everything that's there uh, to help them. So, what I could do on Dennis's turn is I could have absconded. Dennis could, of course go this direction and try and lead them towards him or he could go here to the raider camp and try the wacky wasteland quest so I think that's what we'll do we'll go one two and we'll try the wacky wasteland so since we have the luck trait we can decide that the whole purpose is not to go this way not to go that way but it's all about the journey so we quested any wasteland we have luck so Dennis gets two XP and we stage 101. Uh, 
and we add cards 215 and 216. Now these of course, of course are wasteland cards, so we take two cards for the players and we simply shuffle them in. So we do shuffle, 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 and hopefully we'll encounter one of these cards before the game ends. And we'll have a look now at the card that was staged, which was card 101. And it says, I'm not saying it was aliens. <laughs> so Brahmin have been disappearing from Hoffman Farm. Stories have circulated about strange lights in the sky on nights of the disappearances, but you know it's probably just a death claw or another predator, right? So we have two choices. We can defend the Brahmin pens at night, or we can activate an old radio to monitor signals at night. So we can quest at Highway 74, which is here. Or we can defend the Brahmin sites at night, which is here in Hoffman Farm. So that is something that Cass could actually do. She could, instead of going to the boxcar children, she could go to Highway 74 and see what's going on at night time. Um, Actually, you know what? I think we will. Cass, the box chair children are kind of surrounded by bad guys anyway, and there is a Brotherhood star next to them, so maybe the Brotherhood will take pity on the poor orphans and defend them instead of us, because we obviously can't defend anything in this particular game. So Cass is going to go one, two, because that's rough terrain, we'll go around it, three, and she can't move into another one because it's rough terrain here, so her turn ends there. So that was both Cass's turn and Dennis's turn. So the next card is, please God, there is no shield, is Bug, Super Mutant, and Star. So let's have a look at what's in play. This bug moves towards Dennis. This bug moves towards Dennis. So this little radiated spot is absolutely populated, and it's called Dead End Crossing. <laughs> Yes, you will certainly come to a, a dead end if you walk into that place. Uh, the blood bug takes a step here. Uh, the fire ant takes a step towards Cass. We have super mutants that activate. So the super mutant behemoth takes one, two steps and is next to Dennis. Uh, the brute takes a step here. The skirmisher takes a step here. And there is no super mutants over there. And finally, the star moves one space towards the nearest person, so that would be towards Cass. And it's sharing the space with the glowing one. So it's back to the two characters. So Dennis now is in trouble once again. He can't quest at the raider camp because there's a big dirty super mutant behemoth breathing down on him. Um, he can't camp. He can't really do anything. So I suppose what he could do is he could move on and we'll try and explore some of these tiles. Maybe we can see if we can find Vault 44 for posterity. Or he could run around and go to the Vertibird. No, we'll explore what's down here. We'll just see what else is on the map. So we'll go one and we'll explore this tile. So turning over this tile, we have the tower. So we have another settlement card, which is useful to a degree and we have a raider icon which appears here and the raider icon is a raider scum so a lovely charming little chap that goes there so that was dennis's turn cast now is going to move twice so unfortunately it's one two movement points just to get to the rough terrain here and for her second turn she'll move straight to highway 74 and we'll set off the next part of this quest on our next turn. Now unfortunately it goes back to the board, so turning over the card we have Raider and Deathclaw. So the Raider Scum 
actually takes a pot shot at Dennis because he has the gun icon. Um, we have a bounty hunter that takes a step here. We have the looter that takes a step here. We have an acolyte that takes a step towards Cass, and that's it for those characters. We also have the Deathclaw icon, which is the Marlor Queen here, takes a step towards Cass. The glowing one runs away from the Brotherhood towards Cass, and that is everything on the board. So what we'll do is we'll resolve the fight between the Raider Scum and uh, Dennis. Now we need to hit the head and the torso, but because the Raider Scum has a shield icon, we need to hit him twice, despite him being only a level 1. So rolling the dice, we have one torso and zero hits on the head. So Dennis's combat prowess is as good as ever. Uh, and unfortunately, he does three points of damage. Now the Vault Suit negates one point. So it's two hit points multiplied by the Raider level, which is one. So that's just two points of damage, and Dennis is down to five hit points. And the Raider Scum now occupies his space. So, um, what Dennis can do now, I suppose, is run to the tower and quest. See if we can find anything interesting. Um, or he can go here and see what's on the other tile. So what we'll do is we'll explore a little bit more. So Dennis will go one and we'll explore this tile just in case this is where vault 44 was hiding so turning over the tile of course we have vault 44 which we cannot quest at just yet now this was of course card 203 the desert vault so maybe if we're lucky we'll be able to enter this vault before the game ends so that was dennis's turn Cass's turn now. She's going to quest at Highway 74 to see what happens. Now we have to quest there to activate an old radio to monitor signals at night. Now we need a score of three and we have endurance and intelligence. So rolling the dice, we have a score of four, so we pass it. So what happens is we get an agenda card or we have a reward card. So we take the top one of these and it is a generator. Each survivor gains 2 XP for each generator upgrade in play, including this one. Now, we have another generator in play, so these were the cards we have that we've unlocked. We have two generators, so we get 4 XP for both characters. So that means that Dennis will level up, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, and who knows? We might get the final trait, which would be Charisma, if we're lucky. So we have Agility and we have Strength. So we can have a Agility perk or a Strength perk. So we'll see what we have. The Strength perks are Armor, where you discard at a settlement to gain an apparel item uh, from the shop or from any discard pile. We have Heavy Lifter, in which you can keep two extra cards in your inventory. And the Pain Train where you discard to get one movement point until the end of your turn. Each time you move into a space that has an enemy whose level is equal to or lower than your armor, kill that enemy. Now, those aren't the greatest, and the other one, of course, was agility. So strength and agility. The agility perks are... Action girl, action boy. Discard to perform two additional actions. Uh, moving target in which you discard to go fast gain six movement points and sneak in which you until the end of your turn enemies in your space do not prevent you from performing actions additionally enemies with lightning do not fight you when you move into their spaces so of the two things I could do um, we'll probably go for armor because that gives us a free apparel item from the shop and the tower here just happens to be a settlement space where I could possibly shop. So we'll hold on to that one and Cass now gets 4 XP so that's 1, 2, 3, 4 and we stage 104 and place your figure on that card. So 104 gets staged 
which is the mothership. So we'll put that here, and Cass gets put on this card. And we also stage, we add card 105, and this card gets trashed. So we'll get in card 105, which is a wasteland card. So we'll add it to this one, so that's one, two, and we shuffle these. And the next thing we'll do is we'll read the mothership card that Cass is now occupying. So the radio gets a response. You've accidentally contacted an alien ship. Survivors that are on the mothership can only perform the actions on this card. So Cass, poor old Cass, has just been abducted by aliens. I can fight my way to the bridge and bring the ship down to escape where I draw and fight a raider icon. It gains the rat icon and then I test intelligence four. Or I can attempt to communicate with the aliens and make a deal where I quest on the card, and with C, with a charisma score of 3, I place a cap on the card, and once the third cap is on the card, uh, I place my figure in any empty space. So, I can try and fight them, or I can try and bribe them. Now, that seems a bit mad so i think what i'll do is i'll probably try and fight them because that's a tad more exciting than simply paying a cap every third go so that was dennis's turn that was cass's turn and what we have here is the end of the game uh the bugs activate uh so the red scorpion moves here this red scorpion moves here the blood bug moves here the ant moves, I suppose, towards Dennis because he's the only one left on the board. Cass is way up in the mother space. We have an attack from a raider. So this raider scum is going to try and attack Dennis one more time. The looter takes a step. The bounty hunter takes a step. The acolyte moves towards Dennis. And that is the end of the game. So I think what we'll do is we'll resolve it. We'll, we'll take one last turn just to see what happens. So we'll see if Dennis wins his fight against the Raider Scum. And we'll see if Cass manages to get off the Mothership. So one last hurrah with the Raider Scum and Dennis. Now Dennis has to hit either the head or the, she or the chest. And he needs to hit him at least twice. So rolling the dice, we have one head, one chest, and arms. Now... That's enough to kill the Raider Scum. Unfortunately, the Raider Scum does three hit points of damage to Dennis. Now, Dennis blocks one with his Vault Suit, but he still does three hit points. So, I suppose in one sense, we can say that both Dennis and the Raider Scum have killed each other. So, the Raider Scum can feck off. Dennis can respawn back here and lose all his equipment, but he has no equipment to lose. So we'll just say that at least Dennis got one bad guy, the last fellow who tried to hit him in that round, and got a bit of a, a moral victory. And Cass, of course, is now on the mothership. So she's going to try and fight her way down to the bridge and bring the ship down to escape. So we'll draw and fight a raider icon. It gains the rad icon, so it'll do radiation damage to her. So we might, she might be mutated if she takes a hit. And then we'll test intelligence four. So. What she is fighting is Raider Scum that also has the shield icon, and she needs to hit both the head and the chest. Now, we still have the sniper rifle, so headshots count as a hit. So we also have actually the stealth boy. So before resolving the enemy hits, we can activate that, and if the enemy is killed, it doesn't do any damage to cast. So We'll use the stealth boy and we'll see what sort of damage we get. Now we needed to hit the chest twice. We do, and it's done no damage to Cass, so the Raider Scum dies. Cass escapes. The stealth boy was used, but we didn't need it, so we'll put that back here. And what happens next is we need to test Intelligence 4. So Cass needs a score of 4. Now, unfortunately, she has no intelligence, but she does have a well-rested trait. So we could maybe get 
one reroll. So we need a score of four. So we have a score of one. Sorry, this was on one, two, and three. Of course, we are short one score. So we will use the reroll. And for the sake of gambling, because this is going to be the last dice draw of the game, we'll roll all three dice and hopefully we'll get a score of four. And we get the exact same score again, which is three. So Cass, even though she has taken control of the mothership, cannot control it. So fail. Remove a cap from this card. So basically there is no cap on the card and nothing happens. So unfortunately that was a bit of a disappointing ending. Cass is trapped in space. Dennis uh, at least killed the last guy he was with and the wasteland is now going to be suffering under the yoke of the unity for perpetuity. So thank you for watching this playthrough with me. It's been a very fun experience. It's been a great way to learn a game, especially to review it. It's been a very enjoyable experience and I'm happy to say that my impression of Atomic Bonds so far has been very good. The addition of the gold cards makes exploration and kind of the side quests much, much more, uh, much more to the point that you have an extra incentive and motive to do so. Uh, having the players work cooperatively would also work very well. I found that the odds were quite against me with just two players and it was unfortunate that I had so many shield icons that forced the uh, timer down the board very quickly. However, if I were to play this game again, or this particular scenario again, I would explore more before hitting the main quests, because that's what brought in the extra shield icons, and at least make sure that I have proper equipment to take these things down. Um, other little aspects I found interesting are, of course, the agenda reward cards, which do give a great boost to the characters. Uh, the activation deck is a joy, because it's just simple, it's straightforward, the additional die I never really got to play but again there was only two characters on the board if I had a third or a fourth character um, it would be easier to have some assists from other players now I had an interesting conversation with I believe uh, Eric LF on the comments about balancing this a little bit more in terms of solo play the way I was thinking around it in terms of if you were on your own and you found it a bit too cumbersome to play four characters is maybe if you did a homebrew rule where each character got two turns. There's other games in which the balance is addressed that, uh, such as Star Wars Imperial Assault for example that if you're playing two characters against the board the two characters get two turns each before the, bo the board or the, uh, the, the enemy player takes a turn. So it's something that could be done here to balance out the game a little bit more. Um, there's no real extra quests or things like that that's been added to the game, but the, uh, the mutations are a great little idea. I mean, the fact that the speed demon came up for Dennis was an interesting development for the character because suddenly his mobility went through the roof. Obviously, he takes damage every time he does it, but it did bring in something interesting. Now, we never actually found out what Cass's um, mutation was, so having a look, we would have had herd mentality. During a test or a fight, exhaust a companion to be in the same space as another survivor to generate two rerolls. So, and the negative is you cannot generate rerolls unless you're in the same space as another survivor or have a companion. So, that's an interesting one that you can kind of generate free rerolls for yourself. So, um, yeah, a strange one, but uh, it would have been very handy if you were coming up against big monsters like, say, the Super Mutant Skirmisher or the Behemoth or even the Mirelock Queen that would have taken four hits that you can at least try and roll all the dice to try and see if you can get that last kind of uh, attack on it because there's nothing more frustrating than having two of the necessary hits when you need three and so on. Um, it has been a very interesting experience and a very fun game and I am looking forward to trying it a little bit more. Uh, but like I said, I am going to give Fallout 
uh, atomic bombs a break for a little while. I will probably play through another couple of scenarios before I do a proper review on it because I want to play test as many of the scenarios as I can. Uh, so the next game we will probably go for will either be something like Silver Tower or perhaps Blackstone Fortress or perhaps a uh, solo variant of Star Wars uh, Imperial Assault or This War of Mine or some other solo game that we have in the background just to make things a little interesting. So thank you very much for being on this journey with me. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope this uh, playthrough informed your decision as to whether you want to invest in atomic bombs or fallout or not and until next time good luck god bless and if you enjoyed this video please hit the magic subscribe button because it does help the channel very much so until next time good luck god bless and stay safe